This episode is sponsored by MMS, Missionary Music School. Changing lives one note at a time. Go to mmsforeveryone.com. My name is Porfirio Gueiros, and you're listening to Think and Play. I invited a few of my students, which I call friends, to talk about music. What made that song so special, and what made that song different, and what that song influenced in their lives. If you like music like me, if you're a music enthusiast, this is the podcast for you. So enjoy, have a seat, and let's think about music. Thank you. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Hello, everyone. This is Porfirio Gueiros again. I am uh, happy. I am excited for this episode for one simple reason. Again, this is one of my... I only choose songs that that I love to play and it's challenging for me. So on this episode, I chose a song by Louis Armstrong. And the name of the song is What a Wonderful World. Well, what a wonderful world. Uh, it's a timeless classic. It's one of those songs that that I tried really hard to change it. So I tried some Brazilian vibe on the song. And then I tried for like three weeks. I've been trying to change the song. But in the end, ah, I didn't like it. I don't know if it's my... I'm getting old and more traditional. So what I did with the song, I played as is. Just, I just added some orchestra, I played the piano on it, and I'm respecting Louis Armstrong arrangement, the orchestra piece. It, it's a beautiful song. Well, a few things it's interesting on this song. It, it does, first of all, this, this song was released in September 1st, 1967. And for those that you don't know, I was born in September 6, 1967. So this song was released to the world five days before my birth. Five days before I was born. So, and 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 thinking about, you know, thinking about the song and think, thinking about this 56 years of uh, being blessed, being protected, being being. Uh, like led by God and the Holy Spirit with all my mistakes and everything well you have to make mistakes to learn something in life right if you don't make mistakes you don't learn anything so mistakes are good problems are good because you may you you just make a choice to to change it and not to try not to do it again that's the only thing we can do uh, We can learn out of the mistakes and you can use in the future, you know, for the younger generations. Oh, I know I've been there. I was 17 once. I was 18 once. So I did many, many weird things in my life, but I'm still here. So God's been protecting me. So this song is very uplifting. Uh, celebrates the beauty of the world. The, the beauty of the world around us, despite of its imperfections. So, we live in an imperfect world, and but there's beauty because it was created by God. And what God created, He said, oh, I like it. This is beautiful. This is good. So when God created the world, He created the world perfect. Uh, but, and then He put... Uh, human beings in the world, Adam and Eve, and then 
with the with the free will, Adam and Eve decided to to run away from God. Say, no, I want to have control of my life, and then everything started to. Well, God's still blessing the world because that's His creation. That God still protects the world. That's His creation. But the world became became a a place of not very uh, well. The world became imperfect. But even though many things we can think about many things and we can dream about in this like beautiful world, a perfect world. Some pe some people have have uh, visions of this this uh, utopic world. Can I say this utopic? It's a world that if you have human beings, it's gonna have problems because the problems is in us. It's not in nature. It's not in in the animal kingdom. The pro we are <laughs> we are the problem, and we need we need to, we need this. Well, we have this big void, empty void that we need to satisfy, to be satisfied with something. We need happiness because we feel sad. We need light because we live in darkness. We need, we need salt because we live in, in, in a tasteless world. So and this, is the, 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 this is the world that we are living. Yeah. So, but this song is just, it has a message of op optimism and hope. And one day we're gonna live in this beautiful world. So the words, what's the word says? Uh, I see trees are green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I, I see skies of blue and clouds of white. The bright, blessed days and dark, sacred nights. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? And they really say, I love you. It's a it, it, it's, it's very, very dreamy world. Because in the world that we live today, we don't have that much. We have a lot of hate and a lot of rage and a lot of... Well, this is what I believe. I believe like like 80% of, of, of people, they're, they try to be nice. They try to be nice to, to other people around you. But there's a 10, 20% that they don't care. They don't just... They just we are all selfish people. We, we want to protect ourselves. We, I want my happiness. I want my my uh, I want my satisfaction but what's his name uh, Rolling Stone what's his name forgot his name said we can get no satisfaction he tries he tries he tries I can get no satisfaction <laughs> yeah so we are not ne never satisfied we are never and and the Bible says a few things about that the Bible says be be glad with what you have And glad's not satisfied, but glad's not, not not even not even happy because happy is something that that you're happy today, tomorrow you're empty again. Be satisfied. Be glad with uh, with the tools that you have. Do the best you do the best you can with the tools that you have, with the car that you have, with the talent that you have. Do the be be the best. Be the best, and try to get better. That's the main thing. To make a, a beautiful world come in, you know, to make this world better, we need to get better. Tomorrow I need to do, I need to do better than I did today. Next Sunday, well, I play this Sunday in church. Next Sunday I have to, I have to find something to play it better. Or else it's going to be boring. I'm going to be the same, like a machine playing. So challenge, yeah, keep challenging yourself. Keep trying to, 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 you know, seek for this soul weighted and and uh, like we want to have this wonderful world we want to have a wonderful marriage we want to have a wonderful city neighborhood no violence we we we, we want to have that we have that desire but it's so hard 
because in the end uh, we all have this this longing we long for this long meaning we need that we are longing for that wonderful world and that wonderful world doesn't the wonderful day doesn't doesn't show up doesn't come along and it takes too long and some people lose faith faith because it's taking too long god god promised that god promised hey i'm gonna i'm gonna give you less i'm gonna send my son and my son is gonna establish his kingdom blah 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 and then why why humankind's not changing why are we all still the same crap why we keep on you know making the same mistakes over and over and over and over again yeah my, it's my place of rest okay hold on my soul is groaning our soul is groaning for this wonderful world that somehow i miss so i i have this feeling inside my heart that this is a world that i want to live and i'm going to quote <laughs> well uh, i have a good friend um, dr blaine charret and he used this this quote by cs will uh, cs will lewis cs lewis so cs lewis said if i find myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy the most probable explanation is that i was made for another world think about that so nothing that we can do in this in this earth in this world will completely satisfy us maybe it will give us like a little satisfied satisfied feeling for a few seconds for a few minutes maybe a few hours it depends it depends how much drug you, t you take and you have that experience that it is a feeling of satis satisfaction Sa it's a feeling of fulfillment but then the void is back again and you want to go back to that place that you felt so good under influence of whatever LSD drugs marijuana alcohol you name it any kind of drug sex so you have that feeling that that the orgasmic moment for a few seconds and then then you're back to life and what do you want to, what do you want to do you want to go back that to that feeling and again so the 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 satisfaction is momentarily it's ve it's very like fast you feel satisfied and then you're back again to your emptiness so we we <laughs> I question myself what kind of world I want to live in. So and I think I this I think to myself. <laughs> I think to myself that I'm just I'm a nobody and I cannot change anything. But I have to start with me. I have to start that's a, a tiny little step. That maybe that's a one one drop of of rain into this ocean of of uh on this sea of hatredness and this sea of sadness and if i bring a little bit of joy to the world at just one drop but it's okay because if you join me in this in this cast of 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 bringing joy to the world and and bringing the kingdom of god to the world uh, one will become two two become four four become eight and then it multiplies spread spread the good news spread god's love and i i this is what i ask myself why with this song what a wonderful world what was that what jesus promised us what what is this world that jesus one day will govern like with justice so that's what the bible says one day jesus will come to rule the world for a thousand years and then new heaven and new earth will be created so we expect that that well we've been waiting for this moment for like 4000 5000 years 
you know, the Jewish people was expecting a Jesus Christ, a Messiah that will would release them from 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 you know the, the Roman Empire or the Babylonian Empire or even the Egyptian Empire. So, and Jesus came and established a invisible kingdom. And the Jewish people said, no, this is not the Jesus we want. This is not the Messiah we want. We want a Messiah that will, will use us as God's people and we will, will be the governors of the world because this guy named Jesus Christ will be, will be our president. He'll be our God, our leader. And we are still we, we are still waiting for this world to come up with. And the Bible talks about a lot a lot about this 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 world that we we will be part of the, the, the we Christians because now I'm not Jewish, but I'll be part of this kingdom because I'm adopted by God. When I receive the Holy Spirit and I gave my life to Jesus, Jesus will you use me in his kingdom. Well, he's already using me in his kingdom. So, just because I live in this body today, I, my, my eternal life is still, is still going on. It's eternal. I'm not, well, my physical body will die, but my spirit will, will, will be eternal. And I, I believe in the resurrection of the body. If I die tomorrow, I believe that uh, when Jesus comes back, He will resurrect me and everybody else <laughs> to be judged to, or to govern with Jesus. Oh, there's a, there's a perspective of a perfect, perfect world that one day will be established by Jesus Christ. So it's not a perspective, it's a promise in the Bible. So the Bible says that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will establish a physical world here in this earth. And one day in the next future, Jesus will come back to establish this kingdom. He will. It's promise. It's like, it's, it believe, believe, so it's not me saying, it's the Bible saying. Now, everything in the Bible was fulfilled in the, in the Bible. Every, 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 uh, Every promise, every every prophet that said something, it was fulfilled in the Bible. So the Bible says in Revelation that a new new government will be established by Jesus Christ. A kingdom of God or a kingdom of heaven will be established in this earth. And I will be with Jesus governing and be used by, yeah, I'll be under his kingdom. So Jesus will be present with us. And here's some, <laughs> here's some, the, 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 the aspects of this, uh, of, of this kingdom. It's a perfect kingdom. It's not governed by human beings full of mistakes and envy and greedy and corruption. No, it's going to be a kingdom that will be perfect. Will, be, will not be uh, corrupted. Okay? So, remember this. Jesus will establish His kingdom. Soon. Very soon. Jesus will be present. Jesus be, will be physically present. And He will be the king or the governor or the God Or, or, you know, the, the absolute power over this kingdom. So a few things that the, on this kingdom of, God, of Jesus that will be established will happen. First of all, it's going it's to be a righteous and justice will, will be imperative. So justice and righteousness. There will be no oppression, no injustice or inequality so we will be considered brothers and sisters there's not going to be no one above Jesus Christ and we all be loving each, loving and respecting each other like as we had no no how can I say 
no hierarchy. So I'm the general, you're the colonel, you're the soldier. No, 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 no. We, we all be the same. So it doesn't matter if if you you can be you can you can be in charge of things, but you will not feel that you have power over someone else or you have control over somebody else. Jesus will have the control. The Holy Spirit will have control over that person. And all we need to do is to love them and respect them and serve them and be satisfied with them. Number two, it's, it will be a peace with... No, uh, it will be a world with peace, no war or conflicts. Can you imagine how many wars we have right now? For yesterday, uh, Israel was, 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 was like attacked yesterday by the Iranians. Yeah, so we still have a conflict in in uh, between Russia and Ukraine. Conflict in China, everybody, every, everywhere. Can you imagine a world that it's a peaceful world? There's no war, nothing, no wars or conflicts, no conflicts between neighbors, no conflict between your fellow drivers, no road rage or no, no. Okay, you just have respect because this, this is what the Bible says: love your neighbor, no, love God above everything, love your neighbors, you love yourself. Treat everybody with respect and equality. So no conflicts, peace, no war, and no conflicts. Number three, love, it, it will be a loving and compassionate world. Can you imagine that? People living in harmony with one another. So I don't, your neighbor can be Mexican, Ukrainian, Russian, can be from China, can be black, white, blue, yellow. So there's no conflict between one another. Everybody will love, everybody will respect one, one another. Can you imagine a world with that? That's, that's Jesus' world. That's what God's promising us on this God's promised land, yeah. Uh, number four, unity and reconciliation. We will be we will reconciliate with nature. All animals will live in harmony with humans. Can you imagine you just walk on the street and you have a deer, you have a bear, and they will not attack you? Or a lion? You can like have a pet as a lion or even a snake. I don't like snake, I'm not a snake person or spider person, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into those. But can you imagine? You can live with with nature will be will be together. There will be unity between human beings and human beings and nature. So there is no. I, I can imagine like like no more. There will be roses but no thorns. Make sense? The hard thing it will be the, the 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 bad things of of nature will not happen again. No earthquakes. No floods. Everything nature will be reestablished on this new world. Eternal life. A new world will be established and will be in it will be life in union with God. It's a place of joy, fulfillment, and everlasting peace. So and it will last forever. So this planet, this land that we're living, it's what God created and he said, okay, uh, you're going to live eternally. You're going to live an everlasting, loving, joyful, and this is what he's promising. And for those that, that don't believe in this, for those that believe that, okay, when we die, we die, we go back to the warm, to the, we're going to be like eaten by worm and you're you gonna go back to nothing. I'm sorry. So, I, I believe that that one of the most the, 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 the most complicated things that we have today is that people are living without hope. People are living without a destiny. So it doesn't matter. Everything's gonna end up like nothing. Everything's gonna end up. It's everything. When I die, 
I die and then that's it. No, 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 no. Believe that God will establish his kingdom, his earthly kingdom right here. And we will be part of this kingdom. Do you want to be part of this kingdom? Just receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You don't have to go to church. Not, I don't tell anybody to go to church. Just say, God, show me your kingdom. Show me your love. Show me. I'm here. I'm humbling myself. I need your help. I need you in my life because I'm, I'm, I'm empty. Fulfill me, Lord. You promised that you could. You, you could. You're the only one that can fulfill my desires, my, my void, my emptiness. So it's not about me. It's about me asking God to use me as an instrument. Use me to grow your kingdom. Simple like that. And God will provide. God will show up. God will, will send people, angels, and send whatever you need because when you believe that God is your resource, God is your provider, nothing, nothing can separate you from this truth, nothing. No nakedness, no disease, nothing. If you are on the top of the mountain, God will be there. You are on the bottom of the sea, God will be there. Wherever you want, God can be there with you. You just have to ask. Ask and, and prove it. And say, if, if, if I'm lying, <laughs> you can trash me. Send me an email. Send me a text message. Hey, you're a liar. You son of a... You're lying. Uh, no, because if I lie, God is lying. The Bible is telling a lie. And it's, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about God's word. That's his promise. And that's what I believe. And for many years, I, I didn't believe in that. I just believe that God just, you know, I believe that God created the world, yes. But I'm the one who is in charge. So I'm the one who is, you know, taking care of my life. So till one day I realized that I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't take care of my life. I couldn't take care of my, the life of my wife. I couldn't take care of my life of my kids. I couldn't be there for them. And I said, God, do you. It's your word. It's your promise. So do you. And God showed up every single time, every single day. And it's funny that If you think about Abraham and Lot, then we are talking about, well, at the church we were talking about Lot and this morning, Pastor John. And uh, when Abraham, Abraham and Lot, Abraham was an uncle and Lot was a nephew. They were, they were working together, they, were like, they, 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 they made a lot of money back then. And then one day they decided to split because it was too big. Whatever, conflict, Lot had like 400 men that were with him. Uh, Abraham had like 500, 600. I don't know, a bunch of people that, that supported them. And then they said, no, 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 we need to split. So, so Abraham took Lot to a place and said, hey, to the top of a, of a mountain, say, look at this, look to the right and look to the left. To the right, he could see uh, a very nice place. Trees, green trees. And, and rivers, everything was planted, everything was nice and easy. And the other side, it was a desert. So, so most of the people know this story. So, Lot decided to go to Sodom, uh, yeah, Sodom and then he established his li life in Sodom. But here's the deal. Uh, when you look and you have to make a decision, you're going to go to the easy way that... He has already everything established. Uh, you have, for example, in this case of, of Sodom, they had rivers, they had plantation, they had irrigation, they, they had everything. And in the other side, there was nothing. There was a desert. And in the desert, you, it's just a matter of being dependent or independent of God. So, so Uh, Sodom, it was an independent city. They didn't need God. But, and so Lot decided to go for independent. 
So I know I can handle myself. I can know, I know I can plant. I know I can I can uh, work hard and establish my 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 family. And Abraham says, "Okay." Abraham said, "Okay, so you go to the right. I'll go to the left." So Abraham took the hard way, the the way of faith. So because on the desert you need that God sends you rain. Makes sense. So Abraham went to the desert, went to a place that he needed God. He needed God intervention. He needed to kneel down and say, "God, send me rain. I have 700 people here that need to feed. Send me rain." And God provided rain. Lot in the other way didn't need it. He had rivers. He had irrigation. So he didn't need the rain. So what happened? Well, he still got faith, but the, the, you know the story. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, and then Lot and his family. Uh, the angels go to the law and save Lot and his family, and then the, the, the Lot's wife looks back, and, and and he was transformed into a pillar of salt, a statue of salt, because the angel said, "Don't look back! Don't look back!" And when you depend on God, God will tell you to do things. Don't look back, don't regret. Faith, faith, and faith. On God's promise, keep looking to Jesus. It's like Jesus when, when, when Peter, Jesus was walking on, over the water, and Peter said, "Hey, Lord, can I go?" So, yeah, sure, come in. And then G- Peter j- jumps on the, on the water, start walking, and then like he looked down and he 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 just says, "What am I doing? I'm walking on the water," and then he start drowning. So when Jesus go there and pick him up, so keep the faith, keep looking at Jesus, keep looking at God, God. Is he is the promise maker, and he he believe me, he will do, he will fulfill all his promises, all of them. If he promised that he's going to provide for you, don't worry, God will provide, God will show up. You just have to believe. Don't trust in money, don't trust in your ability to to work hard. No, 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 no. It, it's good. Work hard. Uh, organize your money, organize your finances, and then let God bless you. And everything that you look around, and say, oh, "This was a blessing that God gave me. Uh, God gave me a new student. God, God provided. You know, I didn't get into a car accident the other day, and it, because I know God provided protection for me and my student. I don't know if you know, but I'm, I'm a driver's in, an instructor in the state of Washington and I work at ABC driving in Shoreline and God is providing the students, God is providing prote- protection, God is providing everything, that everything I need, more than I need, more than I need and I want you to, to have this faith, I want you to, to embrace and enjoy God's favor over your life. Eternal life, a new world will be established, and it will be a life with. <sighs> it will be a life with with common union with God. It's a place of joy. It's a place of fulfillment, and it's a place of everlasting peace. So that peace that will never end. Can you imagine that? Oh God, I long for this world. I long for this, this world. And the song ends up with, I hear babies cry. I hear babies cry. I watch them grow. They will learn more, much more than I ever known. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. And yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world this will be. So we have to have faith. We have to believe that God's promise it will be fulfilled. It will, They will be fulfilled, no matter what. No matter if you believe it or not, God doesn't care. God fulfill His promises. And and I want to I wanna tell the, you know, this younger generation it, because Gen Gen, uh, Gen X? No, Gen Z. Yeah. Gen Z. 
there's a lot of kids that they have no commitment with life. They don't care. They don't care about school. They don't care about going to work. They don't care about getting married. They don't care about establishing a family. They don't care. They just want to stay home and play video games. It's what the heck's going on with this world? You have to commit. You have to see. And, 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 you know, we have a generation of sad people. People with no, no future. People with no perspective. Come on, people. Wake up. Wake up. Dream about this wonderful world, but you have to start something. You have to do you. You have to start, you know, baby steps. And you see that God will bless you. God will bless you. All right? So let's listen to... Well, I had this privilege to play with this song with uh, Louis Armstrong. And it was moving my heart. It's like, like ah, such a beautiful song, such an amazing song to play. And then uh, the chain, it, it has a key change in the middle of the song. It's a very, very, very well made song. Very well made song. All right. Did I forget anything? Our soul, my soul is groaning for this wonderful world. And I want this wonderful world to start now. <laughs> yeah but if it doesn't start now it's just because God is waiting for you to say hey God come into my life I need you I need your help I need this place of rest I need this place of joy I need this place of fulfillment that's all I need all right God bless you people love you all see you next time for listening to our podcast Think and Play. If you have any questions, shoot us an email thinkandplay2222 at gmail.com Subscribe for more episodes. We're going to have lots of more to come. Peace out. Thank you, people. Bye. Love you.